Hi, my name is Michael Dessen, and I'm making this a short series of videos with my colleague Mark Dresser about using Jack Trip to do networked audio. So I've posted online this PDF slideshow that you can refer to um, that's being used in this video. So it's probably a good idea to download that. We're making this for students in a class, but we hope it's useful for others as well. Um, and you can look in the notes for the video to find the link to download the PDF file. I want to start with just an overview uh, of how to install this software, but first a couple important notes. As it says here, it may not work on home networks or Wi-Fi, and in addition, if you're using those uh, Macintosh operating systems, you may have trouble with routing and need to use another uh, software for that, as we'll cover in a, a future video. So the core of the software that we're using is a program called Jack. It's an open source uh, software server for routing audio, and you can use it to route audio between different applications on your computer. But we're going to also use an additional program called Jack Trip in order to route audio over the internet between different computers. So the graphical user interface for Jack is called Jack Pilot, and the installation is fairly simple for Jack. You just download it from that link there. Mac users should install the binary for Jack 2 for the operating system that you're on. Jack Trip is a little bit different. It's also an application that works with Jack. Um, it's open source software developed at Stanford University of Karma. But what is different about it is that unlike most applications you're used to, it actually runs in the terminal program and there's no graphical user interface for this. So it doesn't look like a normal piece of software. Um, but instead you run it through command lines. So the installation is a little bit more complicated and I've put here a list of, of instructions. There also are um, install, there's an install uh, file that comes with it when you download it. So when you download that zip file and, and unstuff it, uh, you should be able to see inside there a, a, f a file called install.txt and you need to open that up. I've just elaborated a little bit here because the first step, that, that file sort of assumes you know a little bit about Unix commands. So I've tried to help uh, give you a little bit of a tip about the first step in that file where it says go to the bin directory. What they mean by that is you actually need to open terminal and you need to use commands to get into the bin directory within that folder. So I recommend you first put that folder in applications just so that it, it's located where all of your other applications are. But then open up a terminal window, and as you see in this video, you can use a little shortcut here. If you have the Applications folder open in a, in a Finder uh, window, and you select that Jack Trip folder, you can type in CD at the terminal prompt, followed by a space, and then drag that folder on, onto the terminal window, um, onto the command, and it will display the path to that folder itself. This is a nice little tip using the finder to help you get around terminal more quickly. Uh, you could do it manually in terminal using Unix commands, but this is a little quicker if you don't know those. Also, just a quick note here that the command ls is short for list, and it lists the contents of the current directory, the one that you're in. So it's a good way to check where you are and see what's there. So that gets you into the Jack Trip folder, and then with one more command, cd space bin, you're inside the bin folder that they're asking you to, to get into. Then you follow the commands for those uh, uh, lines of text that you're supposed to type in. Uh, you'll see here it doesn't actually ask me for authentication for the password because it's already installed. But you should um, get a, a prompt for your password and you need to enter an administrator password at that stage. And by the way, you always uh, hit return or enter in order to enter in commands in Unix and terminal window. So. Once you've run those commands, it should be properly installed. And the final thing that you can do to test that, as it says here at the very last point of this uh, bullet list, is that you can open up a new terminal window once that's done. And if you type Jack Trip and hit return, you should see a display like this where it lists the basic information about the program and then a, a list of all the commands. That's a, actually a very useful list of commands with brief descriptions. Uh, but we're mostly going to focus on the very top two, dash S and dash C, which are the ones that really run the program, depending on whether you're in server or client mode. So now that you've got your software properly installed, we're ready to try and make a simple two-channel, two-site connection, and you'll need a remote partner. Um, so to prepare for this, you want to make sure you're on Ethernet and not wireless, and it, we usually use text chats to communicate. Um, so I would, I would suggest starting a text chat, and then you open Jack Pilot, 
and I'm just going to show you uh, going through these in a, in a short video, but basically you're going to set your sample rate and buffer size in the preferences of Jack Pilot. We're recommending 44100 sample rate and 128 buffer size. And you also want to make sure in the preferences that the input and, and uh, output audio device lists your interface, not built-in audio. So once you do that and you agree with your partner about the sample rate and buffer size, the one final step, if you are the host, you need to decide who is host and who is client. But if you're hosting, you want to send them your IP address. So you can just Google IP and it should tell you your IP address. You give that to the client. They'll need that for their command prompt. So the next step is to run the commands in terminal, uh, in a terminal window that actually run JackTrip and establish the connection. So they're listed there. And here you see the host running the command. And the host command is very simple, just jacktrip space dash s for server. And then the host computer is waiting while the client now uh, sets the preferences and runs the command in terminal, which is the same except it's dash c for client followed by a space and then the IP number of the host you're trying to connect to. So when the client does that, if everything's working, they get a connection received uh, result and then the the host gets the same so once that happens you're actually connected to the person and they should be hearing your audio and vice versa but if you don't hear anything or if you need to reconfigure the way it's working um, in terms of routing your audio you need to open up your connections manager in jack pilot you go to the jack pilot application again and just below the stop start button there's a little button where you can open up the connections manager which we call the routing window so there is uh, where you're going to route audio and here uh, it's a very simple setup in this video because we just have the two things uh, your interface which is called capture or playback capture being the inputs playback being the outputs and that refers to the interface that is selected in your jack pilot preferences the other thing there is jack trip receive and send which is just the two channels coming in from your remote partner and the two channels are sending out to them so basically this is a window where you're just connecting things and um, again if you're on macintosh os 10.7 or 10.8 this may not work well right now there are some glitches and the people who create the jack uh, server software are working on creating a new version but until that's done you may not be able to use this window and you'll have to use another program instead but uh, it is a, a very efficient little window here it's a little hard to get used to the way it works so the way I explain it to people usually is that you select I try to you can actually select on either side but I, I try to keep it in order to keep things simple I, I recommend you select on the left and when you select you just click once on something it'll highlight it in blue um, to show that it's selected and when you do that on the on the middle column the, the the right of the white columns you'll see any item that is connected to the item you've selected turn red um, so if it's if you need to make a connection you double click on something on the right and it'll turn it red if something's red and you don't want it to be connected you double click on that and it'll it'll remove the red and disconnect it you can also see in the third column to the far right it'll show you what's connected to what you are selecting so the the tricky part here is that sometimes people start double clicking all over the place and make all kinds of connections that uh, that they don't want and it's also hard to see you can't really see all the connections at once in in this particular interface um, the other program that you could use to do this QJack control shows uh, little wires connecting things so it might be easier but in this case, we're, we're just using the jack, same Jack Pilot program, and it does, uh, if you're on 10.6 or earlier, it does work properly. So um, basically, the default setup is just for the incoming Jack Trip receive channels on the left to be connected to the playback 1 and 2, and the inputs on your interface, capture 1 and 2 on the left, to be connected to the outgoing Jack Trip sends 1 and 2. That's what it'll do by default. Um, if you need to do something different, you can always rearrange it. But assuming you have your, your audio set up properly in your space, that should work, and you should now be able to hear your remote partner. So the final thing I just want to point to here in the PDF is just some troubleshooting slides. These are uh, just really my own checklist that I've come up with over the years. 
there's nothing really official about this. And in fact, there's a lot of other problems that, that I haven't mentioned here or ways to check uh, for bandwidth and other kinds of, of performance issues you can, you can check. Um, this is not comprehensive at all, but just to go through the, the sort of surface level of immediate things you to check if, if something is going wrong. The first thing is to know whether or not you get a successful connection received message. If you don't, it'll probably say waiting for peer. Um, but there may be some other error messages in the terminal window. If it comes back and tells you that the host and client have different sampler rate or buffer, buffer sizes, obviously that was the problem. Um, power PCs may not be supported. There's a bug that can cause errors and it actually comes back with a strange uh, set of numbers uh, telling you that the sample rate is off, but um, that would probably mean your processor type is not supported. Also, double check to make sure that you're on Ethernet, not wireless, and recheck your IP numbers and for typos in terminal. There's one other thing you can do though if you're getting a waiting for peer, in other words, you're not getting a successful connection, is to ping the IP of your remote partner. And it's a good idea for both of you to do this. You just open a fresh terminal window and type ping space and then the IP. And you should get something that looks like this. If you don't, um, it, you're not able to get through to them through the UDP ports. And that usually would indicate some kind of firewall problem. Uh, finally, if you do get a connection, but you don't actually hear anything or they can't hear you, most often, this is a routing problem. It could also be that your interface is not properly selected, in which case you have to stop Jack and, and, and redo uh, from that stage because in order to check the preferences to see if your interface is connected, you have to stop the Jack server. Um, it's also good to do a local audio check to make sure that you can route audio using uh, Jack Pilot to your own playback system and to check that you're, you're getting audio from your mics to your mixer in your own space, because if that's not working, then it probably won't work for your remote partner coming in through the interface um, either. And then at that stage, if, if you've done all this and you can't find any problem there, we usually just try to restart the Jack trip session and then maybe restart the whole um, the Jack uh, server session. And then if nothing else, reboot the computers. There's all kinds of other ways you can test for things, but this is a really basic list. We hope this works for you for now. Good luck, and please use the comments in the video to tell us if there's things that are really critical here that we're missing um, that would be useful to people. All right, thanks.